Water hazards, we got one of the biggest in the world. It's Niagara Falls. People from all over the world come here to check this out. And we're here to check it out today on Score Golf TV. This is Score Golf, the voice of Canadian golf. Score Golf is brought to you by Molson Canadian 67, official beer of the PGA of Canada, RBC Canadian Open, and Canadian Women's Open. Taylor Made Golf, the number one driver in golf. Tourism Kelowna, 20 courses from easy going to ego shattering. Now, here's your host, Bob Weeks. Hi everybody, welcome to Score Golf TV. Well, for centuries, people have been coming to Niagara to look at water pouring over a cliff. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? Well, it is. It's, of course, one of the true wonders of the world, Niagara Falls, but these days, people are coming for a lot of other reasons, too, and one of the main ones is golf. This place has exploded into one of Canada's top golf destinations. There's all sorts of great courses to play, and right here today, we're at one called Grand Niagara. It is one of the best in this region, designed by Reese Jones, and it's been only been open seven or eight years now, but it's already gained a reputation as a solid golf test. We're gonna show you that golf course a little bit later in the program. We're also gonna take you around Niagara Falls and show you some of the great things that they have to do down there, including the wineries, and of course, take you down and show you the falls itself. But right now, we wanna get things started with a little chat with some PGA Tour pros. Prospective, meeting today's PGA Tour stars. In Score Golf's 2013 spring issue, we featured an extensive look at the 50 greatest things about golf. From the natural talent displayed by players such as Graham Dillette, to the sheer power of swings from super freaks like Jamie Sedlowski. There's the youthful exuberance currently spreading through the sport from the likes of Rory McIlroy and Ricky Fowler. And also the breathtaking scenery all across our picturesque nation. Of course, since each golfer out there has his or her own opinion on what makes this game so great, here are some PGA Tour pros sharing their thoughts on the greatest things about golf. Greatest thing about golf, uh, you get to come to uh, beautiful parts of the world. Um, you know, every, every country you play golf in, every state you play golf in, every city, um, there's something special about it, you know, and you get to travel and, uh, and see beauty like this, like what's behind me, you know, it's pretty nice. Uh, it's, uh, it's a great setting. Um, you're going to have good days and bad days. You're going to have bad weather, windy conditions, rainy conditions, but, uh, but all in all, 90% of it's really good. Well, you know, the game of, a game of golf is, uh, is great. It's in any country, pretty much, you can play it. Um, you can play it most days of the year, anywhere in the world. Uh, it's a great game, um, you know, and, and the thing about the game is it's very much a, a gentleman's game. You know, uh, there's good respect for your, your, for your fellow guys you're playing against. At the end of the day, it's just you and that little golf ball out there that got to try and get in the hole as, uh, as as few shots as possible and it's got absolutely nothing to do with your playing part unless you play a better ball but uh, um, so it, I think that the great thing about golf is the respect and uh, and uh, um, you know how true the game is you know there's there's no hooliganism and anything like that it's it's just a great game it's it's many aspects of great just as I said I mean it's it's me against the course and, and against the elements and uh, uh, but the one thing I really like and I think it's very very important to protect is that we all all golfers in the world are playing under the same set of rules it, it's very very important and uh, it makes it uh, uh, so I can play here with the um, with the uh, amateurs on, on the same uh, same terms and that's that's a very very strong thing for us as golfers and makes it easier for for the fans to connect with us. I guess for me, um, I'm, I'm doing something that I love doing. Um, I love the game of golf and to say, you know, what, what's, what do you do for a living? My living is playing golf. You know, I think it's um, quite amazing. But uh, yeah, obviously, um, along with that, the, the charitable aspect um, that comes with golf. Um, obviously, in, on the PJ Tour, there are some fantastic charities that uh, the PJ Tour support. So uh, any time you, uh, you can give back to local communities is obviously uh, something that you want to be a part of. I think there's a, there's a lot of good things, and that's the good thing about the game. Like there's, there's obviously the battle with yourself. You think you've got the game down and you, know, you, you win a tournament, and then um, a week later, 
it can just bite you and you think you can't play, you'll, you know, you think you'll never shoot under par again. Um, that's a good part about it. Obviously the charity aspect with the PGA Tour with how much money they donate to, to great causes, that's a, that's a good thing. Um, getting to travel, getting to do what we love um, for our job is, is good. So, I mean, there's so many good things. Obviously there's you know, good things and bad things about every job, but, but those are the best things. I'm raising 21 million for my, my uh, Challenge Cancer Support Network for 21 years. Um, that's you know pretty, pretty awesome feat. You know it's been a great event for for 21 years, and uh, you know Challenge Cancer Support Network, who we look after these kids and have a great team. And you know I've had a good career up to date. You know I could I want to perform better in majors, and I want to win more tournaments on the U.S. Tour. And um, but uh, but definitely raising all that money for for kids with cancer is definitely the greatest feat that I've ever done. Coming up after the break, we'll visit the beautiful Reese Jones designed Grand Niagara Golf Club. Well, Niagara Falls, of course, is known as the honeymoon capital of the world, and for decades and probably centuries, people have been coming here to celebrate their anniversaries, their weddings, all sorts of great things, and why not? One of the world's natural attractions here with the falls, but that's not all there is to Niagara Falls, of course. You can go down to Clifton Hill and enjoy yourself for a day. You can go and see one of the world's great magic shows. Greg Fruin is here in Niagara Falls. There's so much to do, but golf is a really good reason to come to Niagara Falls. There are so many great golf courses here, and one of the best is where we are right now. Let's take a look at the Reese Jones designed Grand Niagara. Now, time for Golf Getaways, featuring the best golf destinations in North America. One of the world's most popular attractions, Niagara Falls draws tourists from all across the globe each year. Along with its large shopping outlets and numerous wineries, there's plenty of fun to be had. But to make any trip there a grand experience, don't overlook the region's great golf, starting with Grand Niagara Golf Club. Home to a beautiful 350-acre parkland-style track, the championship course is the work of iconic designer Reese Jones, whose philosophy of creating courses that are fair, challenging, continually interesting to play and visually exciting certainly describes the underrated layout, according to Grand Niagara's head pro, Bob Kulig. Part of his design allows people to play what's in front of them. Uh, we have a lot of trouble on the golf course, but we tend to say it's always on the outside. Uh, a course that allows you or the golfer not to be too greedy you know, and pretty good chance to get it around, get it in the hole, and uh, leave here with a smile on your face. It's got an ebb and flow. Every hole has a different character. It's low profile. It's a neoclassic design. It's old style look, ready for the modern player and the modern equipment. I shouldn't. Have, I, I hope every person in the foursome has a different favorite hole. Uh, that's how it was designed. Stretching out to nearly 7,500 yards, the eight-year-old course at Grand Niagara is one of only two original Jones designs in Canada. Nestled alongside the Welland River, it offers a fun and unique round of 18 holes, which Kulig says sees more than just the local crowd. It's a pretty neat drawing card for us, and a lot of our clientele will hail from all points, and it's very interesting to see that there is a Reese Jones following out there. We'll cater to clients that make it their uh, time to try to get to as many Reese Jones courses as possible. Those visitors will find Grand Niagara to be a course that fits the contours of the land it sits on, with rolling fairways that provide wide landing zones and manageable rough and fescue for offline shots. I felt very fortunate uh, to be asked to design the Grand Niagara course because it uh, had probably one of the better sites in the whole area. It was next to the Welland River. We had some wooded holes. We had a lot of open holes. We had a little topography, a little nice flow to it. Uh, so I knew that we could build a uh, very, very enjoyable championship type golf course. Jones' goal of striking a fair balance between playability and challenge was a difficult one, but Grand Niagara certainly meets it. Well, at Grand Niagara, we really designed the course for the everyday player. We have multiple tees that everybody can find a comfortable challenge. It wasn't designed uh, to be hard, it's really designed to be enjoyed and challenged and uh, actually have, have an opportunity to have a good score. Based on the, uh, the yards that you want to play it from, 
you know, it plays to your strengths, plays to your abilities. Certainly, I think this golf course uh, challenges everybody that comes out here. And the difficulty, obviously, uh, some of the ponds and the fescue can be a little gnarly, but uh, we do find people can get in and find the ball in the fescue in advance and probably make a shot into the green. And uh, that's all anybody wants in golf, I think. <laughs> Approaching those greens, golfers will notice a consistent theme that plays out around the course, elevated putting surfaces. It's a subtle design detail that adds a touch of difficulty. The one neat factor uh, in terms of how this place has been set up has to do with much of the greens complexes are all raised. You know, it's one spot that you've got to put a little bit of air underneath the ball at all times. You cannot hit a lot of bump and run shots into these greens. He's asking you to fly the ball into the hole. You'll be, probably be better off for it. Under sunny skies, you'd be hard pressed to find a better conditioned golf course than this track. The layout features a steady diet of sand traps, while the greens are consistently in immaculate form. Our goal is to provide the best possible playing conditions every day. It doesn't matter if we have 20 people here or we have 220 people here. We want to provide the same experience for them. And to that end, we try and have our greens not crazy fast, but consistent. Uh, we try and have the best uh, again, championship conditions that we can provide our, our members and guests. Probably one of the biggest uh, issues we have is, is trying to maintain the bunkers because there's a lot of sand on this property. Grand Niagara's signature holes begin at number five with a 360 yard par four. Fairway bunkers and a creek intersecting the fairway make accuracy off the tee a premium. One of those elevated greens and a pair of nasty bunkers cap off a challenging but nicely laid out hole. Number five, good par four when you cross the road at Grand Niagara, a little uh, dog leg to the left, but one that you want to be able to put uh, an emphasis on your drive. You want to be able to get the ball in a good position just down towards the pond, looking into a green that has some pretty good elevation to it. You know, I'm always one that I've always told people, maybe one extra club will get you into that green. How he's designed it out here, four is not a bad score. If you're going to play for three, you know, you might have to live with a six on the scorecard. A lengthy par three comes next. Distance control and solid shot making are vital here on the sixth, with plenty of carry needed to land on the two-tiered green that's protected by a large and deep front bunker. Uh, number six, another great hole that he's designed out here. I know from the championship tees, it measures close to 240 yards, a strong par three. Probably the only spot on our golf course with any force carry, but at the same time, you've got to use your knowledge out here. Get it in the right spot based on pin position, and like a lot of places, par's not a bad score. The back nine at Grand Niagara is highlighted by the picturesque par 4 16th. It features a wide fairway for big drives, but is also guarded by a sizable sand trap for any misses to the right. Another elevated green challenges your approach and tests your chance at a birdie. 16, just a good uh, strong par 4, uh, very rewarding easy fairway to hit into with a green that sets nice and high to the right, so it is somewhat of a, a slight dogleg par 4 to the right and again guarded with a, a good sized bunker on the left hand side, another elevated green. The experience at Grand Niagara doesn't end once you wrap up your round. Playing a high quality course for under $100 leaves your wallet with plenty left over for any of the other activities located nearby. Grand Niagara is just minutes away from the downtown tourist attractions to keep the fun going once the sun goes down. The club holds several tours and partners with a variety of stay and play packages to suit your interests. With so many uh, tourists that we cater to and uh, tourists being golfers, we do have a number of relationships with different hotels and tour operators. So again, a lot of different ways to make it happen. We can uh, take care of all the arrangements, put you in touch with the right people in terms of some of our hotel partners. It's only going to make for a, a better stay combined with some great golf as well. Down on the Strip, there's an array of attractions available to check out, from soaking in the sights of one of the world's great wonders to enjoying the games and shops along Clifton Hill. There's a wide selection of restaurants and entertainment to choose from, including those where the stakes can get a little higher. Here, every age group is covered, with no shortage of selection either. And with all the amenities and attractions in the area, perhaps you'll consider making it a permanent getaway. The resort plans to develop an exclusive residential community surrounding its Reese Jones Signature Golf Course. About 500 homes will soon be constructed on site for those who wish to have the fantastic golf and entertainment options available at Grand Niagara just a chip shot away. After these messages, we'll take a look at Graham McDowell's favorite shoe, Echo. The Technology Report, a look at the science, research, and development of the game. 
For 2013, Echo is asking, which hybrid are you? Following in the footsteps of its previous shoe releases, Echo continues to take the path less traveled. Successful launches of the Golf Street and Biome Hybrid offerings have drawn the praise of amateur and professional golfers alike. I've been wearing uh, Echoes for a couple of seasons now. Um, great shoes, I mean, obviously, I've uh, been very familiar with them most of my career. They're you know, one of the largest shoe brands in the world. And uh, they're, they're, the golf side of the company is very impressive. You know, they're certainly at the cutting edge of uh, uh, the street shoe vibe that everyone likes to wear these days. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I've really enjoyed wearing their shoes the last couple of years. I mean, I certainly love a pair of shoes that I can pull out of the box, uh, brand new, uh, and put on, my, put on my feet and walk 18 holes and, and, and still feel okay when I come, come in in the afternoon. So what can consumers expect this year? New on store shelves is the Tour Hybrid footwear line. The Tour Hybrid's design combines Echo's latest biome technology with a more classic golf shoe look. Part of our challenge was uh, some of the more formal classic guys like a Graham McDowell. He liked biome hybrid. He wore it a lot in practice rounds, but in competition he wanted to look down Thursday through Sunday at something that was traditional. You know, I try to dress quite classically and quite traditionally on the golf course, and of course we're wearing trousers on the PGA Tour, so I like a golf, I like a golf shoe with a little bit more of a classic look to it, you know, the wingtip, uh, you know, the nice, um, the nice kind of colorful saddles, and the more classical look, so yeah, I'll be uh, probably sticking uh, to, to that general vibe. I mean, I love the Biome hybrids, but they are much, much more of a casual shoe and a great one to throw on with a pair of shorts. The shoe's upper design comes in traditional dress shoe or country club styles. Equipped with Echo's hybrid technology, the shoe combines a leather-lined insole and the outsole of one of the company's most comfortable designs, the revamped Biome Hybrid. After debuting last year, the 2013 model returns with an aim towards reducing injuries and soreness sustained on the golf course, all from the ground up. So with the Biome Hybrid, it just gives it more of a sporty look. It's a natural motion shoe, and it basically is a shoe that's designed to allow the foot to move naturally. So you're landing more towards the arch, the middle of the shoe, versus the, the uh, actual heel. And what that does over time, it promotes strengthening in a lot of the, uh, the feet, the lower legs, and decreases the likelihood of injury. While the primary genius of Echo footwear may be the research and technology integrated into its design, perhaps the most underrated quality is how easily it translates to every step of your daily routine. They have really uh, led the way when it came to the more casual street shoe. Um, you know, seeing that win the Players' Championship this year, uh, you know, the, the Biome Hybrid, you know, what Freddie's done, uh, Fred Couples has done on the Senior Tour, really just kind of uh, bringing that casual, cool look to the game of golf. And, uh, you know, Echo are really kind of, uh, uh, really, Make, make, you know, stumping their authority on, on world golf, uh, pardon the pun, but um, they're a uh, you know, great shoe brand, a great golf brand, and uh, hopefully the, their success continues. Teeing up Team Canada, reviewing Canada's national golf program, brought to you by RBC. Let us help you make your mark. In 2003, Golf Canada committed to producing the best amateur golfers in the world with its national and developmental squads. The program has shown significant signs of progress as it's graduated numerous talented tours all over North America. Graham Dillette is the biggest name on the men's side and he's now a fixture on the PGA Tour. Matt Hill won the NCAA individual title in 2009. That same year he tied Tiger Woods' collegiate record of most wins in a single season with seven. Alvin Choi is fresh off his final season with Team Canada and he's already won five NCAA tournaments this year alone and has nine career victories in only his junior year at North Carolina State University. Eugene Wong won the Jack Nicklaus Award in 2010 as the top player in the NCAA, joining past winners such as Phil Mickelson, Tiger Woods and Hunter Mahan. He's already won on the Canadian Tour, now known as PGA Tour Canada. On the women's side, Stephanie Sherlock and Rebecca Lee Bentham have graduated from the amateur team and find themselves on the LPGA Tour both looking for their first wins. Meanwhile, Jennifer Kirby is an All-American at the University of Alabama and helped the Tide win their first national championship in 2012. And Jasu Keel will swing clubs at Tiger Woods' alma mater next season, Stanford. Stay tuned to Score Golf this summer as we'll get you face-to-face -face with the future stars of Canadian golf. When we return, we'll set you up with a tip to help you improve the tempo of your game. Every week here on Score Golf TV, we provide you with a tip to help you lower your score. And they're especially important 
at this time of the year because you got lots of rust and you're a little shaky and you don't know what's going on and the balls are going into the woods and into the water. Everything will be cured just by watching this tip. Play better golf. Lessons to help you improve your game. Hi, my name is Bob Kulig. I'm the head golf pro at the Grand Niagara Golf Club. It is the winter layoff, and I know a lot of our uh, uh, golfers out there want to get back to the links, get back to hitting some good shots on the golf course. And I know the one thing that I struggle with, and a lot of the people that come to see me each and every year, has to do with swing speed and swing tempo. Today I'm going to show you a nice little tip that is going to assist you with slowing down that swing speed, working on your tempo, and getting better results on the golf course. Very, very simple, folks. What we're looking to do it's a, a, a tip that we will use and show you in my right hand. If I'm normally going to be taking my grip in my right hand and holding the golf club in my fingers, notice that would be the grip. What I'm going to do for this tip, however, is take my golf club and place it between the index and forefinger on my right hand. The purpose here is this drill is going to now allow me to swing the golf club a little bit slower back and through, which is going to allow me to be better in balance, better in tempo. If I want to make a golf swing that is too fast and too violent, which is going to force me to lose my tempo or my balance, I'm going to cause some real damage in between my two fingers. So again, the drill allows me to make full golf swings, but doing it in such a way that proper speed and proper tempo is not going to cause me any damage into my hand. Pretty good tip that uh, I like to share with a lot of my students. For similar tips and instruction, uh, an invitation to see your local PGF of Canada Pro. Thank you. Week Speaks is brought to you by Bushnell, makers of the Pro 1M and Tour Z6 range finders. Folks, I know it's the early part of the season, you're just getting out there playing golf, but there's three things I want you to remember for the next time you go out and play golf, all right? And take this with you throughout the whole season. Number one, golf is a game. It's supposed to be fun. You're supposed to go out there and enjoy yourself. Listen, you go and you tell your boss you're in a meeting and you're actually out playing golf. You tell your spouse you're at Home Depot picking up wallpaper samples to do the bathroom and you're actually out playing golf. You work so hard to make up these little stories so you can go play golf. So come on folks, enjoy it. Number two, Annika Sormstam once said that the greatest round of golf would be a round of birdie on every hole, 54. Well, let me tell you, golf was invented back in the 1700s and since that time, not one round of 54 has ever been recorded. Nobody's done it, Tiger hasn't done it, Rory hasn't done it, Jack hasn't done it, Arnie didn't do it. So the chances of you doing it on your next round probably pretty slim. So if you make a double bogey, if you hit a ball in the water, don't worry about it. Go on. They make a million golf balls a day. I'm sure you can get another one in your bag. Play the shot and just enjoy yourself. And number three, the third thing is golf is a lot like life. It's not fair. If life was fair, you wouldn't get pimples on your bum. If life was fair, I'd be living on a beach in Tahiti with Pamela Anderson. But golf's not fair. Life's not fair. If you hit a ball in the middle of the fairway, it hits a mound and buries another lip of the bunker. Who cares? So what? Just roll with it, folks. Enjoy your game. Have fun when you're playing golf, and you will enjoy your golf season a lot more. That's all the time we have for today on Score Golf TV. I want to thank everybody out here at Grand Niagara. This is a fabulous spot. Come on down and see the falls and play a round of golf, and we'll see you next time on Score Golf TV. Thanks for watching Score Golf on TSN, the voice of Canadian golf. Score Golf is brought to you by Molson Canadian 67, official beer of the PGA of Canada, RBC Canadian Open, and Women's Canadian Open. Jack Link's Beef Jerky, feed your wild side. Bob Weeks Clothing supplied by Ashworth.